indeed for him having to sit out this very important match as a result of injury sustained in Paris a week ago. The game this afternoon to be controlled by Alan Richards from Caldicott, who's been on the Welsh international panel this winter. And it'll be Pontypool in the shape of Mike Goldsworthy to get the game underway, kicking into a slight breeze. Despite the tremendously heavy rain of yesterday, the pitch here at the Talbot Athletic Ground is in very good condition indeed. If you are watching in black and white, remember that Pontypool have the hooped stockings and Bridgend, the plain ones. Gerald Williams on the right goes back behind the Bridgend pack and kicks infield. Peter Lewis. There was a suggestion that the top of the pitch might be greasy. Perhaps Peter Lewis finding that the case as he brought off that catch. Bridgend have on the right Gareth Williams wearing seven. Penry Ellis is their number eight. O'Callaghan completes the back row. Roy Evans and the skipper Billy Howe are the locks. Holding the ball up and throwing Gareth Preddy, a newcomer to their team, hooking, and that's Bishop going away for Pontypool. He's taken late by Webb. But the, the he was in touch first, and the referee has gone for the first offence. David Bishop, the first important break of the game, Pontypool's scrum half. On the left, Pontypool uh, wearing number six, uh, Mark Brown. Five, eight rather, is worn by Butler. Five, Martin Jones, the replacement for Squire. That's Bishop's very good hands indeed. A long-range drop at goal. It's a great shot, but it's just a little wide. And already David Bishop has shown that he may have a crucial effect on the outcome of this game. Peter Lewis for Pontypool, their fullback. It's in space. How the Bridgend captain turns as Lewis tries to flap it back to the supporting Pontypool players. And here's a ball for Bridgend to use. Pierce kicks it down the wind, but it's right into the hands of Blevin Taylor. Can't break the tackle of Glenn Webb. Bishop was there to try and hack it forward. This is Taylor in action again on the halfway line. The rugby is lively already. We could be in for a treat this afternoon. Grandstand packed at the Talbot Athletic Ground. Perkins and uh, Roy Evans clashing at the front. Uh, the Pontypool line-out jumpers barging. And Mr. Richards awards a first uh, kickable penalty. Indeed, it may well be the first penalty of the game. Thinking back quickly over these first eight or nine minutes, and Pierce looks at the distance. The wind to help him, the angle just a little bit ticklish. 30 meters the range to Gary Pierce. Could this be 3 0 to Bridgen? Yes, it could. Gary Pierce strikes the first blow of the afternoon. It's 3 0 to Bridgen. And Pontypool pay the penalty for a line out defence. The face of Billy Howe, Bridgen's skipper this season. Steve Jones is through very fast on Gerald Williams. There's been a knock on by Pontypool. Dots of the Pontypool 10 meter line. Gerald Williams has the ball for Bridget. Pierce. Richie Griffiths. Hull Davis in the line, making a bit of room for Glenn Webb to try and come inside Bevin Taylor. Pontypool's left wing is good. Penalty playing the ball on the ground against Webb. Once tackled, Glenn Webb should have released and failed quite to do so to Mr. Richard's satisfaction.
Goldsworthy failing to find touch. Oh, a charge down. This could be the first try of the game if he can get there. The crowd asking for the try. Mr. Richards has given it. Brennan Taylor, the scorer. Well, that was drama. Potipool in the lead, and listen to their supporters. A long pass then sent back to Pierce, who's inside the 22, but he delays fatally, and from an hour on, it's just a question of whether Blethyn Taylor can reach the ball before it crosses the dead ball line. Referee says, try. The score will just be 4-3 to Potipool, because uh, Peter Lewis's gallant conversion attempt was just astray. David Bishop has the ball from the full scrum half. 21-year-old. Eddie Butler's feet now control it. Levin Taylor again, the challenger on Webb. Both men knocked forward. The first one came from Taylor. So Bridgend will have the put-in at the set-piece. Dangerous moments again for Bridgend. They scrum down, look so close to their goal line. Look at the power Pontepool are putting on. Gerald Williams, though, is nimble and quick enough. Touch flag is up over there. Seven for Bridget, Gareth Williams, six O'Callaghan, four down the line, Roy Evans, five the captain, Howe, the men on the right. Number five for Pontepool. Martin Jones got amongst them, collected the ball, infringement took place, and Bridgend are penalised. A penalty kick at goal by Pontepool fullback, Peter Lewis. He slides it well, and it's a goal. Messrs. Les Peard and Grenville Morgan, the touch judges, salute Peter Lewis's accurate kick. 7-3. The scrummage just inside Bridgen's half. Gerald Williams goes round behind his forwards. That's him. Howell Davis, very well tackled indeed by Faulkner. Glenn Webb chasing this down the Bridgen right. Mark uh, Brown, the important bit of covering for Pontypool, one of their flankers. And Hewish, the other one, is in possession at the moment as they strive to counter-attack. There's been plenty to please the paying customers, especially if they happen to be from Fondapool, who lead seven points to three. A try and a penalty to a penalty. Seven minutes of the first half now remaining. Out to Gary Pierce. That was Richie Griffiths and Daniel looping around him. Good tackle by Faulkner, but good support work by Griffiths. Popped back by Lee Jones, that's Bishop, always looking for space. Howell Davis turns, goes as far as the 22, is challenged by Lee Jones. That's a wretched kick, and of course, uh, Hewish was seeming to me to be putting him down very hard. Here's Bishop again, on the ground. Bridgen pulling themselves together. Peter Lewis playing the part of scrum half. Goldsworthy. Goff Davis is in space. Gerald Williams covers him. Peter Lewis following up very hard. Bobs it back. Pontypool doing well to keep the ball alive. Bridgen perilously close to going over the top and killing it. for the eight-man shove by Pontypool. A try could be there for the taking. All credit to Bridgen. They stayed as steady as a rock. Pierce nudges them a few metres away from the goal line. Eddie Butler. Strain perhaps showing a little on the Pontypool skipper's face. When you think of his last six or eight weeks rugby, it couldn't have been more demanding, could it? Four international matches in the space of the last eight weeks, and two or three cup ties 
at this level. Still, though, Butler is up high to get the ball. Perkins and Price, and now Bishop. Bishop heads for the line. He scored. David Bishop scores for the Bulls' second try. Butler wins the ball, and Perkins and Price come galloping into the fray. They give the ball to Bishop, but he's still got a bit to do. But he cracks the Bridge End defence. Great try by the scrum half. Not a difficult kick for Peter Lewis, right beneath the post. This should be worth two more points. Well, that conversion by Peter Lewis turned out to be the last score of the first half. It lifted Pontypool to a lead of 13 points to three at the interval. A very satisfactory job of work done by Pontypool against the breeze. We join the play a little way into the second half. Perkins, who's done tremendously well at the lines out today. Here come Pontypool with Peter Lewis, just a subtle alteration of the angle of attack, testing the Bridgen midfield. That seemed to me to be a Bridgen offence, but perhaps Mr. Richards saw that Pontypool had got onto the ground first to kill the ball. Here goes Pierce. That's Richie Griffiths, having his kick charged down by Lee Jones. Slips it inside, Gareth Williams is there, so is number five, Billy Howe. That's Gareth Williams' kick to touch. Nothing's been going right in the last quarter of an hour or so for Bridgen. The grandstand, very packed indeed for the cup tie, the semi-final. And it's been exciting. It's been quite lively too, the rugby's been quite fluent. Now we're a little way into the second half, 11 minutes to be precise. The line out is between the 10 and 22 meter lines of Bridgend. Billy Howell to Gerald Williams. That's Gareth Williams, seven for Bridgend, trying to counter attack but losing out. Bishop's service to Goldsworthy. Just short. So the Regen posts have another let off. Peter Lewis missed a penalty a minute or two ago. Now Goldsworthy is narrowly off target with his drop kick. Drop out 22 for Bridgen by Gary Pierce. Here's Pierce again. That was Richie Griffiths being taken rather high, it seemed to me. Careless work for once by the Pontypool eight. Pierce has got a little bit of space to run in. Choosing to kick. Seems to me that the Pont the Bridgend halfbacks, each of them, Gerald Williams and Gary Pierce, are not uh, in a very confident mood this afternoon. Each of them unsure of his touch. That's Perkins yet again. Throw not satisfactory. Set scrum. Look at the work of Staff Jones, but uh, Pontypool's loose head prop. Driving back on Bridgen there. And this is Paul Daniel getting as far as the halfway line before he's cleanly tackled by Mark Brown. On the left, number five for Bridgen, Billy Howe using his great strength to try and pincer the ball and rob Pontypool. And the crowd rather relishing this, the sight of the famous Pontypool 8 being forced to backpedal. You don't often see that 8 pushed around. Well done, Bridgend. The set piece is a little way into Pontypool territory. Midfield, Gerald Williams gathers. Paul Daniel into space, it's not guarded. Lee Jones got back, Goldsworthy now knocked on. There may be some advantage for Bridgen. Pierce spearheads their drive into the Pontypool 22. No advantage put into Bridgen on their opponent's 22. Oh, Bridgen! 
That's the dangerous position for Pontypool now. And for the first time for some time, Bridgen's supporters make some noise. Freddie's strike. Gerald Williams runs. It's given to Hull Davis. He's torn clear. It's bobbed on by Gerald Williams to Glenn Webb. He's broken the tackle of Blenheim Taylor. And there's to be a set piece. Bridgen's right wing, Glenn Webb. Hasn't, uh, the ball hasn't run to him readily today. Good position for Bridgen. Gerald Williams holds the ball. Strike is by Preddy. Controlled by Henry Ellis, the number eight. Here's Pierce. They miss Daniel. Richie Griffiths goes for the half break. Faulkner is good. Good looping by Daniel. It's boomed out in the direction of Titley, but Goff Davis, Pontypool's right wing, intercepted. 14. Number seven, Hewish is driving on. The play is furious. And the Pontypool pack showing great mobility around the field. They're not just a set piece eight. They're speedily after the loose ball. Gerald Williams to put the ball into a set piece. Set scrum just outside. Pontypool's 22. is still running it's popped on by Hull Davis in the direction of Webb but um, the whistle has gone back near the middle of the field for a knock-on a little deflection in the direction of number 14 Glenn Webb a judge forward David Bishop puts the ball in scrums on Ponapool 10 meter line Butler takes pressure off him but it's not good and Bishop is swallowed up A loose ball heads for Honopool's 22. This is Pierce. This is Daniel, Paul Daniel, pursued by Goldsworthy. Goff Davis was there as well. Titley sends the ball infield to Pierce again. Tackled by Hewish. Steve Jones gets a boot to it. Glenn, Glenn Webb is going back to support Howell Davis, who has the ball now. Good counter-attack by the fullback. That's Titley from the left wing. Playing it into the hands of Blenheim Taylor. That's the second interception by the wing during the game. Gerald Williams should be able to save for Bridgen. My word, this is tremendous rugby, and Spear Pierce is in a bit of space. Surely he took the wrong path. He has managed to transfer it to Richie Griffiths. Hewish is there for Pontypool. The play is just outside Bridgen's 22. Mr. Richards hasn't blown his whistle for some time. It had to go then. Pity. Great exchanges. I'm left reflecting then when number 11, Blethyn Taylor, let's look how he gets away with this interception. I wonder if he'd kept running, whether he'd have done more damage instead of putting it onto the boot, as he does, where Gerald Williams is able to cover. David Bishop, scrum outside, Bridgen's 22. Goldsworthy strikes from long range. Great kick. Well may he say whoopee. That was a real killer blow for Pontypool. And it takes him up to 16-3. Listen to the crowd. Let's have another look at the uh, set piece. Bishop's long pass. And look at this for a drop kick. Still the Bridgen 22. The ball with Gerald Williams. And now Pierce. Richie Griffiths. Makes the break and puts Hull Davis into space. Has Glenn Webb got the heels? What a great piece of running by the wing. The flag is up, look. Oh, let's have a look again at that beautiful running by Glenn Webb. He was, he was being cut off, and look how he changes his angle, and look at that outward body swerve, and he so nearly makes the corner flag. Bad luck indeed for the Bridgen right wing. So on the right, the pack, which has done so well this afternoon. Price at the front, Perkins, number one tucked in, Staff Jones, Martin Jones, a gallant replacement for Jeff Squire. And at the back, Hewish, Brown, and the captain, Butler. It's awkward. Mark Brown knocks it through, and Richie Griffiths has to cover. Ledin Taylor closing in very fast, but there isn't to be a second try for number 11. He's in touch.
Kevin Taylor, the man who early into the game sees the lead for Fontapool. We move into injury time at this line-out. Regen's dream of equaling the Ness League's record. Oh, look at that kick. That's really done it. What a great kick by David Bishop. That says it all, doesn't it? Two magnificent uh, drop goals in the second half. One by Goldsworthy. And now let's have a look at this one by his partner, David Bishop. I was just about to remark that Regen's dream of equaling Celeste's record of five consecutive appearances in the cup final looked to be gone, and that drop goal has well and truly evaporated that. I don't know whether a dream can evaporate, but you know what I mean. The drop goal by Bishop, anyway, was the last score. So, a handsome victory by 19-3, putting Pontypool into the cup final.